Mr. Banks. Oh, what are you doing? You coming? Let's see if we can actually get him to come on my arm. Oh my God, he's never come on my arm. Oh my goodness, we've never done this before. This is crazy. Oh, you just flung it. Oh, she is getting big. Look how massive Bridget is. Look at this. We have the structure of the King Cobra cage finished. Now it's time to decorate, to paint, to decorate, to get it ready for Kevin's new kingdom. It's not a snake you want to make a mistake with, but it's smaller. Woo! He is not playing any games. Let's woo! This is my Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman. She's a little female. This is the smallest crocodilian on the planet. So we got this little female, and then we got about a five foot male named Fred over by the big crocs. Come on, Woo! have a little snack. She loves to eat her shrimp. She's a little beast. Come on, come on. Woo, woo. Woo you just flung it. Oh, here, let me try to help you. Ready? Oh, come on. There you go, it's down there, go get it. Here, let me help you out. There you go, good girl. So we're gonna let her be. She's getting nice and big, and as soon as she can take on living with a big five foot male, we'll pair them up so we can breed the world's smallest crocodilian. Look at this, we got Bridget, the broad snout, looking good. Come here, Bridget. Ooh. Oh, Bridget, jeez, she is getting big. Look how massive Bridget is. Holy smokes, look at that tail. She's become a monster, like she is not a little caiman anymore. Look how big this broad snout's gone. No exaggeration, she's a beefy little girl now. And these guys are from Argentina, Brazil. They can get about seven, eight feet long, depending if it's a male or female. And this is just a little wee lady, so she might just get around five, six foot. Look at her. She's a little beast. Short, broad jaw. She's got like a Tyrannosaurus Rex head for crushing down on mollusks, crustaceans. Easy meal being made of something like a small turtle or like a freshwater snail. She's really upset today. Oh! Mr. Bakes, the Utah Island Iguana. Critically endangered, handsome individual, and he loves shrimp. Don't you, my boy? You want some shrimp? Come on. Oh, oh, he's being so gentle. Usually he's pretty nutty. So the Utila Island Iguana is the most critically endangered iguana out of all the spiny tail iguanas. That's Tinosaura for all you scientific nerds out there. The Tinosaura family is all the spiny tail iguanas. This guy's only from the Utila Island off of Honduras. And if they go extinct there, they're only gonna be found in captivity in insurance colony. So that's the goal with this big boy. We're gonna get him a girlfriend and eventually he'll be breeding, creating an insurance colony for their species. So out in the wild, they're actually called swamper iguanas too, because they love to live out in the mangrove swamps and they love to chase down crabs and eat them. So shrimp is a great source of protein for a, a Utila Island iguana. You done with that shrimp? You want another one? He's struggling, these are big shrimp. A lot of protein for this little guy. Look at him crunching down that shell like it's nothing. Mr. Bakes, oh, what are you doing? You coming? Let's see if we can actually get him to come on my arm. Oh my God, he's never come on my arm. Oh my goodness, we've never done this before. This is crazy. This is Mr. Bakes eating on my shoulder and out of my hands. I've never had Mr. Bakes do that. Look how beautiful he is. This is like the best coloration he can have when he's out in the sun, that beautiful blue. Now, hopefully he doesn't bite me because like I said, these guys, oh my goodness, are designed to crush down crabs like they're nothing. This is crazy. I've never had Mr. Bakes on me like this. Hopefully he doesn't confuse my earlobe for shrimp. Want some more? You skittish little lizard. <laughs> He's so handsome, I love him. He is such a good looking boy. So if you guys out there have these Utila Island Iguana and you're out in Florida and you got females, hit me up. I definitely want to get this guy into a bigger enclosure and suit him up with some females so he's nice and happy. It can help out his population. Mr. Bakes, swallow your food and I'll give you more. This is crazy. I've never had him crawl up on my arm like that. He must be so comfortable now. Come on, finish that and you can have this. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Come on, Mr. Bakes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, look, come, come, come again. Don't give up on me, come. Come, 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 go, go. This is pretty cool. I've never had this interaction with him. It's so nice. All right, I'm gonna take this shrimp, leave the rest of it for him right there take some of his water to wash my hands real quick. I'm gonna secure his enclosure and let's go see what's going on with the snakes. Ooh, what is going on my beautiful people? Look at this, we have the structure of the King Cobra cage finished. Now it's time to decorate, to paint, to decorate, to get it ready for Kevin's new kingdom. To actually make it as more of a, a homey feel to the wilds of Malaysia, like the forest feel. And we've got Sherry in here making a beautiful painting in the background. Sherry, how's it going? 
It's going good? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Um, water. What? Water. I can't hear you. Anyways, we have a lot of enclosures to clean today. We have Chinese shark nose viper, Papuan black snake, Indian cobra, even the Bushmaster needs to get clean today. So let's get to it. Let's get on going because the future is bright, big, and beautiful. Ooh. I'm thirsty. I'm going to get some water. All right. So time to get clean. I need to first clean out. Let's see. Let's start with something a little bit easy. Let's take out, <laughs> let's take out the Bushmaster, the world's biggest viper. This little lady went to the bathroom and she's right here hiding inside her little hide. Let's just flip this over, make it nice and easy. She had a live rat just a couple weeks ago or about a week ago. And these guys only eat live rats for the most part. You can get them on frozen thawed if you were to warm up that rat real good. But even so, with this individual, she prefers to eat those live rats. So I just gotta make sure I get her nice and taken care of so she doesn't have any poop on the inside of her enclosure. You can see she's looking big and beautiful. Love Bushmasters, my favorite viper on the planet. Biggest viper around. Just gonna put it right in there, nice and easy. Get a little lid on that. Nice and secure. Come on. There we go. Nice and secure. All right. So let's get this glass out. Got to do a bit of a cleaning. Get some fresh water. Get this out. And the easy thing about the paper towel. What? Where'd you go? The easy thing about the paper towel is you just take it out like this and fold it up, and you're done. Spot cleaning is really easy when you have mulch and stuff like that. But uh, I've had my issues in the past with the Bushmasters and to make sure that they're nice and tidy and clean. And also they don't get too much humidity because you can actually have that problem with this forced animal. Uh, paper towels can be easier for Bushmasters. All right, let me get some more paper towels. Let me get this enclosure clean and sanitized and get some fresh H2O. Ooh. And for those of you guys wondering, my leg, it's not completely healed. Eventually in probably a month when the scars are there, and there's no red flesh to look at. I'll be able to show you guys what the bite looks like so I don't get demonetized on YouTube. So I'm good, I can put pressure on it. And today's actually the first day that I've worn shoes in over a month because um, even like a week ago, trying to wear shoes was uncomfortable with the big hole that's right here. So now I can, I bet you didn't think I could do that as soon as I could, doctors. <laughs> Seriously, they are concerned and want me to stop. Anyways. All right, so nice and clean, we can put the Bushmaster back. You can see she's looking beautiful. This snake is so stunning. You can see why I love him. Let me just gently hook her. My sweet, sweet Bushmaster. Oh, she is a beast of a viper. Look at that. Biggest viper on the planet, and she's just a little baby. All right, so let's get her right into the enclosure. I got plenty more snakes to clean. Time to catch up on everything. Come on, get your body in there. Big, beautiful girl. She loves to eat her rats. She'll take down a big weaned rat, no problem. Be happy for a couple weeks. All right, so lock that, nice and secure, good to go. Next is old, it's just a, such a fun snake, the playing black snake from Papua New Guinea. Not common in collections, because nobody wants to work with them. This little snake is basically like a black racer with the world's deadliest venom and hopped up on pixie sticks. So it's definitely a snake that's earned my respect because it's literally able to fly out and contort as it bites you, injecting large amounts of venom. It's not a snake you wanna make a mistake with. And it's a snake that's definitely gone a lot bigger. I mean, like, look how big this snake got. Thick as can be, it used to be a bit smaller. And it is all over the place. Like, look how the snake moves around when you come to It's like a black racer, you don't even know. You can see this going through your yard, I think it's just a simple black racer, but whoop, it's not. It's a very, very deadly venomous snake that can, can be compared to something like a tie pan when it comes to athleticism and its venom. Most venomous snake in the family of the red belly blacks. Look at this. Of the red belly blacks and the king brown, Sudeca. So this is the most venomous. Look at that. That's crazy. This doesn't stop. Like a wiry little black racer. It's one of the most dangerous venoms on the planet. So we'll leave her to be. She's been busting out of her shed. There's shed all over the place. I'm going to clean up this enclosure, get it nice and tidy. We'll go put her back in a second. All right. So now that the enclosure is nice and clean, we can put this plain black snake back where it belongs. She seemed to have calmed down. Look, she's hiding under her coils. She's nice and calm. Should be good to go. Just an easy transition. Nothing crazy, no bites. We're good to go. Nice and smooth. She's definitely gotten bigger. She was not, she was definitely not like six feet long when I got her. Let's just close this up. Nice and secure. She's good to go. Now let's move on to one of my favorite snakes in the collection, the male Indian Cobra. He is so sexy. Like the prettiest Indian Cobra I have ever seen in my life. 
or one of the prettiest. There's one other one in Europe that I've seen that just is a smoke show, but this one just definitely takes the cake from being a beauty. Let's see what this guy's doing. Ooh, beautiful Indian cobra. What is going on? Very defensive snake. I know this snake, it's got a pretty good demeanor, so I'll handle this snake a little bit different than I would handle other Indian cobras I've worked with. Relax, nice and easy. Obviously, not something that anyone should ever do is free handling venomous snakes, but with a lot of experience, I'm able to read these animals in their body language and show them off to you guys. Look at that beautiful Indian cobra. A little bit flighty today, so we're not gonna mess around too much. Just a nice little transition into the can. Beautiful boy, look at that. Such a gorgeous looking Indian cobra. If you got females out there, hit me up if you're out here in Florida. Would love to get a female and breed Indian cobras. That would be pretty cool. And then we got this full shed. Look at this. Nice and easy going, a little bit broken up, but just shows that the snake is gonna keep growing and growing. They can get like around five, six foot. But usually this time of year is great. Humidity is on point, everything's pretty easy. Let's put that snake back. Easy clip. What's going on, dude? Nice and easy. Come here. There we go. Beautiful Indian cobra. Gorgeous little ball of yellow speculation breaking through the brown. That's why I love this cobra. He is so, ooh, he is so pretty. All right, nice and easy, buddy. Right back in the enclosure. Good to go. When you're ready, I'll take back my snake hook. One, two, three, four. Thank you very much. Close. Real easy lag, just like this. Oh, secure. Now it's gonna be a real fun one. We have the Chinese sharp nose viper right here. This is one of the most dangerous vipers in the room. Probably the most dangerous snake in the room next to Justina and a lot of the African snakes because those snakes, in comparison to everything else in here, super flighty and defensive. Some snakes get used to being handled and they realize I'm not a threat, no matter how dangerous they are. Like Kevin, he understands I'm not a threat. Justina, for some reason, her personality just doesn't let her guard down and she's always ready to fight and defend herself. This Chinese sharp nose viper is the same. This snake literally is a pogo stick with fangs. And if you get bit, some people say you only have 100 steps left, so they got the nickname 100 Pacer. So let's make sure this is nice and smooth. No mistakes made with this snake. Give yourself some space, stand right about there. Let's see how this goes. Usually, it's not too hectic, as long as you pay attention to the snake's head at all times, and you don't get too comfortable with it. Let's see. Pinocchio, the shark on this viper. Hey, buddy. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. And they actually have keeled scales, so they kind of feel like a rhino viper in the sense that they have a really rough texture to them. Whoa! You see the strikes? See him going everywhere for a strike right now. Holy smokes, he is not playing any games. Let's, woo! Look at this, look at this. He's not messing around, look at him. He is such a gnarly dude. Look, he's hissing, he's wagging his tail right now. He's not playing any games. Maybe I can get him to target my hand over here a little bit more. Look at that, he is so fired up right now. This snake does not mess around. He's hissing, puffing, targeting. Let's not make a mistake, because like I said, he could literally shoot out and bite me in the chest. They are a pogo stick with fangs. Look at him, he is just so riled up right now. But he's so beautiful, look at him. What a gorgeous looking animal. Some people say they're like a water moccasin from Southeast Asia, but that's way more dangerous than any water moccasin I've ever worked with. These guys, are nuts. They, they're like a fertile ant in my opinion. They strike out really fast. They have nasty, nasty venom. Worse than a water moccasin. You definitely would not want to make a, a mistake with them. Look at this. Whew. Growing like crazy. What a cool snake. It looks like uh, that shark nose wasn't able to come through properly. It just broke off. Looks like you guys' nose ripped off. All right. I'm going to throw this away. Get this enclosure nice and clean, and I'll see you guys in a second. And right here we have the Death Adder from Australia. This is going to be Flash. A lot of you guys thought that was a good name. I like it. He's red, and all you see is a little Flash when he strikes out. So the Death Adder, world's fastest striking snake. His name's Flash now. All right, so let's put that Chinese sharp nose viper back. You can see, whoa, striking like crazy. Look at this. This snake is super sensitive to any heat signatures. They got great big heat pits right on the front of that face, that helps them target predators, prey, anything like that. Yeah, it's such a beautiful snake. Definitely gonna have to get a really nice setup for this one so people can admire the beauty. All right, we're gonna put this snake right into the enclosure, just like that. Watch that head at all times. Biggest thing about working with venomous snakes is paying attention to their heads at all times, because they don't have hands, 
Their head is their biggest weapon. And if you're paying attention to their head, you know where they're heading. And also, if you pay attention to their eyes, you're able to focus on what they're focusing on. So definitely keep that in mind, whether non-venomous, venomous, or really most animals on the planet. Pay attention to the eyes. That's always key. All right, so now that that's taken care of, let's take care of the eastern diamondback rattlesnakes. My babies that I've been raising for a while. These are the two young ones I've had since they were little guppies, little, little worms. And the wild caught one that the police officer brought over is over there on the other side of the room, doing good. Just a little bit finicky, prefers to eat live over frozen thawed. Let me see, let's get this open. Usually they have a feeding response, so watch this. Nope, you're gonna be good today. That's great. Usually they strike out wanting food. This is my boy. Let's try to gently get him out. There we go. Nice and easy big boy. He's got a great looking rattle on him right now. Grow him like crazy. Get the other one out right here. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Pay attention to this guy. Good thing is they want nothing to do with me. So as long as I'm not harassing them or anything, they just go on their merry way. Oh, <laughs> not now. I didn't mean go on your merry way right now. Oh, come on. That's not the merry way. The merry way is this way. Come back. Oh, sorry. There we go. Awesome. Two gorgeous Eastern Dimeback rattlesnakes I've been raising from little babies. I love these guys. This one on the on my right hand used to be super laid back and tame. And this one's always been a bit of a spicy individual, so I've never tried to push it. So let's just gently get them into their enclosure or into the holding receptacle. Nice and easy. Right into the container. There we go. My sweet peas. Although with one mistake, feeding response, mishandling, anything like that, simple mistake. You can get one thing in you and then you're gonna rot from the inside out. Hematoxins and their venom will eat your blood cells away. It's nasty stuff. And also, depending on what hospital you go to, they might do stuff to you to help relieve pressure like a scapionomy or anything like that. That's gonna end up leaving you with nasty scars like your Wolverine with big scars all over your hands. It's an old outdated method to relieve pressure. Nowadays, I think most people would just let it be because the pressure will go down, your circulation will eventually flow. But that's just one of the side effects of uh, getting bit. It's not just the aftermath is always worse than the bite itself. It's like my crock bite, you know? It was just a simple bite, right? But then I had an infected flesh all around the actual bite area and then that had to be removed. That had to get surgery and they had to cut that meat out. And that's what ends up happening with viper bites. The more necrotic tissue, the more has to get cut out. So always keep that in mind. It's not just the bite, it's the aftermath and treatment that's worse. All right, beautiful people, let's put these rattlesnakes back. We're good to go. My sweet boy, come here. You wouldn't bite me, would you? No, you probably would. Look at them. Woo! Look at that. You touch a beautiful boy. Raised them up from a wee little worm. And now you've got beautiful Eastern Diamondback rattlesnake with a great looking rattle. And notice, he's not looking to hurt anyone. He's just looking to go back home, mind his own business. There we go. Quick little turnaround. Right back inside the enclosure. There we go, watch your tail. This one right here, the female, used to be so chill. Now I don't trust her much. I haven't handled her like I used to handle her. So I wouldn't do too much with her but uh, she's not too bad. She's a great snake. And just because a snake is venomous doesn't mean it wants to hurt you. It just has venom to hunt down its prey and defend itself. And for the most part, most venomous snakes don't even want to waste their venom when defending themselves. It's a waste of energy. Uh, venom's a modified saliva that takes a lot of energy to produce it. So when they waste it on something that's not food, that's even more wasted energy. And now that venom that's supposed to be used to get more energy, you know, you're wasting more energy to build that energy up to get more energy and. It's just overall energy loss. Ooh. Oh, right, you, oh, oh, this? Oh, this is only the new Chandler's Wildlife merchandise, 100% con, easy on the nipples. I know what you guys need and I provide. Look at this beautiful eyelash viper with some gorgeous plant life around it. And this is just a sample. The actual merchandise that we're selling on the site has the OG CWL in green stamp right here. So you guys can represent. Also, we have this design too. Live like a king, Kevin looking luxurious in his, in his throne with his crown and all the plants around him. You guys can get this and also this shirt right here so you guys can represent and help support the build out of this place. I love it. These designs were actually created by Sherry, the same artist that's working on this gorgeous mural right here. You can actually hit her up right here on the Instagram. She does murals, she does logos like this. 
She's a kick-ass artist. And I'm like, look what you're doing. She did all the research to see what plant life is native to Malaysia so we can give Kevin the best representation of his wild habitat. So she's doing mangroves, she's doing fig trees, she's doing bamboo, she's doing water. She, she, she doing everything! Go to her Instagram right now, it's loud and it echoes in here. We need more insulation. But you're doing a great job. Thanks. Aww. Thank you so much. Anything you need, I'll get it for you. Oh, water? Uh, I can't hear you. Anyways, all right, beautiful people, I will see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, follow your dreams. Stay passionate about what you guys love. Look what I'm doing. This is something that was just a dream of mine for the past couple years, let alone my whole life, to have this facility and build out my private wildlife park. And now it's a reality. So just take note. Dreams are just goals. Make them a reality. I love you guys. I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and be passionate about what you love. I can't hear you. Anyways, we have a lot of enclosures to clean today.